Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Road of Life channel. I am absolutely thrilled today to have one of my favorite atheists on the channel. This is Armin Navabi. If you don't know him, he's the founder of the largest atheist organization in the world. It's Atheist Republic. And Atheist Republic seeks to unite atheists around the world, give them a, a, a place to um, be able to communicate free from religious dogma, uh, community. And also Atheist Republic is really big on fighting religious oppression around the world. So wherever people are not free to express themselves, not free to, um, you know, be re whatever religion or non-religious, um, Atheist Republic really um, highlights the the oppression of the people who've been imprisoned, currently in prison, and and really tries to really just kind of um, fight that kind of worldview. Am I doing a good uh, uh, introduction here, Armin? Do you want to add anything? Welcome. No, no, no. That was fantastic. Yes, that, that was great. That was great. But I mean, we also I don't know if I if if it would be too much to start with. But we also fight religion itself, not just religious oppression. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And speaking of that, Armin has a book called Why There Is No God. And so I, I read his book last week. And so we'll probably talk a little bit about that. And you can get his book on Amazon at the link in the description. Armin also, and, and by the way, if you're not a member of Atheist Republic, then I just encourage you to to join because they're doing a lot of good work. And so uh, the the link to the website for Atheist Republic is in the description. And also Armin has there's a YouTube channel. Yeah, there's a YouTube channel. And there's also you have a YouTube channel called Secular Jihadist, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So do you want to talk a, a little bit more about all the work you're doing? Uh, well, um, Susanna and I and a whole bunch of other people who have to go unnamed because of the nature of what we do, um, and also Babak on the Persian side, we create communities around the world for atheists to be able to express themselves, find each other, um, help each other, um, fight back against discrimination against atheists, uh, mistreatment, ostracization, demonization. Um, that's the main goal, the, the, just the community building and making atheists feel um, sense that they're not alone and there's a community out there for them, right? Um, but also on the side, we also uh, fight back against religion, religionism, the, the idea, and not just religion, also all dogmatic beliefs, superstition, which religion falls like, falls under like religion is a form of superstition and dogmatic idea but we try we expand to um all forms of superstition but the main goal like fighting against religion is a secondary goal creating a community for atheists where they feel welcomed and supported um is the first goal and in the first goal the interesting thing is that some religious people support us in that first goal like you for example but um there are many Muslims or Christians or Hindus or religiously Jewish people who come and support Atheist Republic because even though they don't agree with our second goal, they agree that atheists shouldn't be mistreated for the fact just for the just for being an atheist, right? So on that goal, we can unite. With yes. A little, yeah. And and for you know, what you're doing, it, like, I actually, you changed your website. It used to say like atheists who give a crap or something like that. But, uh, you, you know, and so like, it's like you're caring about what's happening around the world and like people yeah. who are in prison, you're really like fighting to try to, you know, um, like get them out and expose what's going on. So like, that's something... I think is really wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But it's also one thing we want to show is that we don't we can ally with people who are fundamentally opposed to us in some uh, some of our other goals, right? Like I could see a religious person 
and I could be against their religion and they could be against my atheism, but they're like, okay, we disagree here and we're working against each other. But in this goal, we seem to be sharing, we're going in the same direction, right? So right. let's fight over there, but work with each other over here. So some people seem not to be able to do that. Like, you're like, hey, why are you working with that person? That person is doing the opposite of what you want over there. Like, I know, but he's doing, he or she is going moving in the same direction here. I don't, I need to, I don't need to make an enemy out of that person just because we disagree on some other things. We could work with each other. Exactly. That is so, that, that was beautifully said because that's exactly how I feel. And that's why I support Atheist Republic. No. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So um, now I don't know how many who are watching have heard Armin's story. And Armin says he's tired of telling his story himself. But <laughs> to me, his story, his religious upbringing and the events that shaped his life, it is one of the most profound stories I've ever heard. Uh, so I would really love for the benefit of my audience, if you would be willing to share kind of about your religious upbringing and, and what happened with you. Um, okay. So I was raised in a very, very, very liberal family. Okay. But my, but, but when I, in, in school, Iran, I was mm -hmm. in Iran. Yeah. So mm -hmm. outside of my, outside of my family life, I was exposed to religious ideology, but inside my household, I was exposed to a parents that were more liberal than parents in average in the United States, I would say. Right. Um, but so I was like at home, I was being exposed to certain ideas. And then at school, I was being exposed to like some from very on. I realized that there are multiple ways of looking at the world. Right. Like I was like, um, and I was obviously, you get exposed to liberal parents, you take your parents' side initially, but eventually um, I started thinking about the concept of hell because even liberal people in Iran, they still believed in God. They still believe in hell. It just didn't make any sense to me that why would people not care about, not, not take avoiding hell very seriously, right? Because I thought like, wait, these all these liberal people that I'm surrounded by, like it's not just my family, the people who we hung out with, the parties we went to, the people we socialized with, were mostly liberal people who were against religious, or against the mullahs, didn't do anything religious in most of their lives, but they still believe in a God and they still believe in heaven and hell and all that stuff. And I'm like, why does these people not do anything about avoiding, but, but not going to hell? Like these people literally believe that there's a place that you could end up in that you're going to burn for thousands and thousands of years. And they're doing absolutely nothing about avoid trying to avoid going there. Like they haven't even done any amount of uh, mm -hmm. investigation or thinking about like, Hey, am I going to, am I going to end up in that place? Like I thought like if somebody told me that, you know, five years from now, there's going to be 10 people that are going to beat you up for, for 10 hours unless you do this, you know what I mean? I'm going to do everything in those five years to make sure that that doesn't happen to me. But yet these people believe that they're going to be burned alive for, you know, thousands of years. And their, their life is going, they're going through their lives thinking about their careers, thinking about their exams, thinking about the next party that they're going to go to, the outfit that they're going to be wearing. Not, not much thought. I actually took uh, a match and I lit my uh, skin on fire right here, right? Just to see, they're still marking as if, just to see how much it hurts to burn. As a kid, I did that. And I was like, and then I tried to imagine that for um, for like 10 minutes. I was like, that was, that, you know, that was painful. I was like, that was really painful. I can't take 10 minutes of that. And then I tried to imagine that all over my body. And then I tried to imagine that all over my body for years. I'm like, nobody, nobody can tolerate that. Like, I have to make sure I do everything in my power to avoid going there. And I'm like, and then I realized that everything in my power is not good enough because I'm going to sin. Everybody is going to sin. And I have to pay for that in hell. Um, and like, other than, other than the prophets and the 12 imams and Fatima, according to what we were told, we were, we believed that we were a 12 Shia uh, in, in Iran, right? 
everybody sins. Everybody except, and this is crucial, children, right? So this is the difference between Islam and Christianity. In Christianity, you're born with sin, right? In Islam, uh, you're born pure. You only start sinning after you, you, re you reach the age of reason. Now, this is what I'm saying is not true for all Muslim beliefs, but the way that we were told in Iran, the age of reason uh, for boys is 15, for girls is 9, right? So I just I realized that if I die before age 15, I get to go to heaven because I haven't man I haven't sinned. Um, suicide is a sin in Islam. However, there's no sin before age 15. So if I commit suicide before age 15, that suicide would not be considered a sin. And I will go straight to heaven because I haven't committed any sin. So I jumped out the window uh, around age, I think, 13 or 14. Um, and I broke uh, my legs. I fractured uh, my back, I, my left hand. I was in a wheelchair uh, in my bed for seven months. Um, and the only reason why I didn't try it again is because I watched my parents traumatized. I saw my mom collapse from the, the devastation of that. I saw my dad cry for the first time. So that was the only reason why I didn't try it again. And when I reached age 15, I was like, okay, this is game over. I have to be a proper Muslim now. I have to be very, very good because now every sin counts and I can't commit suicide because suicide will take me straight to hell, right? So at age 15, I was like, okay, this can't be that hard. I should just, I just pray and do the fasting and just not harm anybody. That can't be that hard, right? But I real, I didn't realize that it's actually very, very difficult, okay? Because I, that was the age of puberty, okay? Like, I mean, close to the time that when girls becoming more and more attractive, right? To you, like you keep noticing them more and more than before, right? Um, and the problem is that we were told that sins are not just actions, sins are also thoughts. And I realized that I'm constantly sinning all the time. And this is like, I had, you know, so these are things that I'm not going to go into details because I think you might have a Christian audience. <laughs> I'm not going to have the, nope. gonna... <laughs> like, There's like three Christians on my channel. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> well, okay. So, yeah, anyways, but I, I, that it was very difficult to remain, uh, to try to be a good boy, <laughs> right? But at the same time, I realized that, you know, my mom is still going to go to hell, okay? My dad is going to still go to hell. And it just didn't make sense to me. I'm like, and also, like, we were watching movies, American movies. We watched soccer. And, like, for, and I'm like, all these people are going to go to hell. Like, all these celebrities. We watch BBC for as news. And, like, this anchor is going to go to hell. And I'm like, this doesn't seem right. Like, I couldn't see what, how kind of justice would put condemn all these people to hell for eternity. So I basically investigated. I was I was trying to figure out if there is a way that I, these people are not going to go to hell because I couldn't believe it, right? I was trying to justify them going to heaven. I I tried to convince myself that they are also Muslim. It's just like Muslimish, like they like maybe what they believe in is kind of Islam light, and that's why they're going to still go to heaven. So I tried to study religion, the history of religion, to just see maybe they're also kind of like Islam. But then that was the that's how I started doubting. A religion studying the history of religion was what led me to realize that this is all just made up it was it was very obvious to me once i started studying history of religion that this is all um a product of politics and superstition and culture it just you know expressing itself in the form of religion it was it was it was so obvious to me at that point that I couldn't believe that so many people actually believed it. Like, why did nobody told me that this is where religion comes from? And I also was embarrassed because I was wondering how is it possible? How did I even believe in all of this? Like, I was wondering, like, when, at what point did I even accept these beliefs? I couldn't remember. Like, I was, like I for as long as you know, I just like this was just it. Like. I don't really, I didn't really, I just realized that these were just things that I accepted as given, and I was so embarrassed that I never questioned it until now. But I also f felt like maybe I'm insane because 
I am or very arrogant because I am claiming that I've just really I didn't know any atheist, right? When I when I studied the history of religion, I just I was becoming an atheist and I didn't and I, and I was the only person I knew. Like it wasn't like now that everybody has like Facebook and back then social media wasn't a thing, right? Um and I didn't know the I didn't know I, the only two other people that I knew didn't believe in God was Freud and Marx. That's the only, <laughs> those were my references. Right. And uh, like, I mean, like, am I insane? Am I claiming that I know more than every person I know? Like I knew doctors, I knew professors, I knew engineers and all of them believed in God. And I felt like, am I, I felt like I was so arrogant claiming that I figured out something that they haven't figured out. Right. So I'm like, are there anybody else that thinks this way? Like I went to, look to see if there are other people who think like me. So I started a community online uh, for my own selfish reasons, just to be able to see if I'm alone or, or other people are like that. And as soon as I built it, so many people joined it. Uh, and I built it on Orkut because Facebook wasn't a thing back then, right? And that just led to that selfish desire to not be alone and to see if there are other people like that eventually led to Atheist Republic. Wow. Sorry, it took a cool. long. I should have, I should, I... Hey, that, that was perfect. And um, I just wanted to let you guys know, actually, Armin gave me a tip that's going to be like revolutionary for my channel. You know how you guys are always like putting questions and I'm like, guys, I can't find your questions. And I'm like scrolling around. Well, he just showed me how I can star the question. So Lena, I got your question and I'll ask him later. So if you guys have questions, I'll try to keep up with the chat. Um, well, I mean, this is to me, it's such an incredible story. I mean, it's like the when I heard you first tell that you jumped out of a window, I was like both horrified, but also totally impressed because I was like, this is absolutely horrifying, of course, because of the tragedy that that caused for you, for your family and everything. But also I was like, that is faith. Wow. Like <laughs> that is incredible. Like, that's that's the kind of faith that could God could change the world with that faith. Like if I had that kind of faith, man, I I just I feel like I could just say cancer leave the world right now and it would obey me. But I so <laughs> like like that faith is just so incredible. So like that's why I was been I've been so impressed with you since I heard your story. Um, you know, but also of course you I know it all. what's that. I lost all that faith. Well, it's that's gone. okay, but it's... but <laughs> but 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 see, you're still the same person of action because you. you I wouldn't say the... it was faith. Okay, but but it was also I think the faith. Okay, so I, there was two parts to it. Okay, there's a faith part yeah. to it, and there's a logical part to it. Okay, I think the faith part gave me false premises. Okay, mm -hmm. the but the false premises. My logic applied to those large, to those false premises is flawless. Like I, people think like yes. that was what I did was insane. I'm like, tell me where I got, went wrong. If I, I would either have to gamble going to heaven and hell, right, or guaranteed heaven. Why would any sane person gamble eternity in hell? Like yeah. I, I like I was so surprised that nobody else took advantage of this loophole to make sure that they guarantee go to heaven, right? So my logic is solid, but yes. I was dealt with a bad set of premises. That so false yes. premises plus false plus good logic gives you wrong conclusion. So I actually this is why you are impressed with the faith part. I'm impressed with the logic part. I see the faith part as the most dangerous part of this equation. I'm like, look what. Faith does. Even when you apply good logic to it, it gives you dangerous conclusions. <laughs> Even if you apply, yeah. But it was because it was faith in the wrong thing. But if you have faith in the right thing, let's just suppose that you know it's true. There's no God, right? Mm -hmm. That's a then you're having faith in the right thing, and whatever comes from that will be good. How would right? you identify like, whether your faith is in the right thing or in the wrong? Well, that's tough, right? Like that's tough. <laughs> so, I mean, that seems like that's might be a long journey for some people. 
right? Well, give me give give me a short version of it. How do you identify whether or not your faith is in the right thing? Well, I can only speak for me personally because everybody has different ways. But for me, it was looking like considering my experience of the world, considering the the options of answers that are available right? Considering the holy texts that are available and um, seeking to find which one of those is true. And so, you know, that methodology also gets you exactly faith in Islam, right? Well, it doesn't because you're using your mind, you're using your mind, you're using your experience to like figure out. So, I mean, I read the Quran, it did nothing for me. I thought it was like, I don't know. Well, what if it did? Okay, I mean it did yeah. for some people. Yeah. Okay. So your methodology could have as easily gotten you <laughs> Islam because somebody who reads the court, like when you read the so when you read the Quran, right? It didn't do much for you, right? Okay. But somebody reads the Quran and it just blows their mind. Okay. They have like a gazillion orgasms in their head. Okay. And <laughs> like, so, wait, can we say this? Is this a Christian show? Sorry, right? <laughs> so, so if we can, okay, so if they can, so if your methodology, if we accept your methodology is a methodology that can verify your faith is the correct, gives you the correct answer, that person that reads the Quran and has that experience, all of a sudden, based on your methodology, their faith would be justified. Well, um, in many ways, I think their faith is justified, not in everything, but, um, but look, it's a confusing world, right? How, what's your methodology? What not makes faith. it better? Not my, my, my methodology is like faith is faith. Okay. My methodology is using evidence <laughs> and logical reasoning. Okay. And the reason why my methodology is better than faith is because faith seems to be giving you random answers in every direction, right? And it doesn't give you any answers that have any predictive power or create any models that uh, explain the world in a way that makes us um, think, that creates models that explain the world in any meaningful way. In fact, actually, not only it doesn't explain the world, it makes, uh, it provides answers that makes uh, it more complicated and more mysterious than the that question that we were trying to answer itself. But when I use logical reasoning and uh, evidence-based uh, scientific methods, we actually come up with answers that seem to be um, not randomized and more and more keep centered into, uh, you know, keep progressing in answers that are not self-contradictory and have predictive power and create models of the universe that do not contradict each other uh, and have explanatory power over um, over our, about our observations. So that's why my methodology in trying to explain in coming up with answers is superior to faith. Well, but here, I don't think we're actually, um, like, I'm not saying you should just start with faith. I'm saying use some of the same things that you're talking about. I described it as experience, but I will also, I can add in evidence and things like that and, and, and logical reasoning. So in order to decide what I put my faith in, do you see what I'm saying? But that's that's not faith then. Faith is believing in the things that are unseen according to, you know, based on things that you can't verify. Right. But, but I mean, aren't you also doing that? Because can you verify, no. can you verify, yeah. um, you know, the, the reason for your existence, the origin of life, the origin of the universe? Can you verify that? You can make belief in it um, justifiable because the theories are testable and they're falsifiable, right? The, 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 the views that, um, the, the claims that Christianity or Islam make right? You cannot test them. And there are claims that are unfalsifiable, right? So I'm not saying like the, the when you use a scientific method, I'm not saying you come up with answers that are 100% correct, but you come up with answers where you are justified in believing in them, right? Because 
if they are wrong, at some point you could test that they are wrong. And there's a way to show that they're wrong because they're falsifiable claims, right? But and do you apply the scientific method to every area of your life or do you obtain knowledge in other ways? Um, well, okay, so it's a scientific method, okay? Um, mm -hmm. and, and logical reasoning, so it's not just a scientific method, right? And also, uh, no, because there are certain things in life that are not important so you just apply intuition because you can, you would be your mind would be exhausted if we were overusing it. So, for example, if somebody tells me like um, this re restaurant seems nice, right? And you just look at it and you just don't use your logical reasoning and you just walk in and eat there because of because of your intuition, it just seems like it was, would be a good place to eat. If you were wrong, it wouldn't cost much for being wrong, right? Mm -hmm. But if I, all of a sudden somebody tells me like if I get cancer. And somebody tells me like to go to this country and somebody just like does some woo woo stuff on you and you will be cured. And then over there, because the consequences of getting the answer wrong is higher, then I will spend, I will, I will be more interested in applying logical reasoning and the scientific method because, but I'm not going to exhaust like my mind over every small, small little issue over like, okay, mm -hmm. I, let's apply logical analysis to every single step that I'm taking during my day. So no. Yeah. Well, I know, I think it's not just the unimportant things that we don't apply the scientific method to, but like, for example, if someone tells you, I love you, Armin, mm -hmm. do you verify that with the scientific method or is it your experience that tells you whether or not that's true? Um, well, I, I said logic, I could apply logical reasoning to that. Like, I'm not just going to believe somebody who lo says that I love you, obviously. Right. Yeah. And so in the same way that you're going about discovering who loves who actually loves you from who doesn't love you, that's the same type of methodology that I'm using to find out what is worthy of me putting my faith in. Right? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, just like you you would have different factors that decide whether you or not you trust that person when they say I love you, I'm mm -hmm. using those same type of methodologies to figure out whether or not I should trust God, um, you know, when well, he if says you're using, you. mm -hmm. okay, well, if you're applying the method that I'm applying, which is, mm -hmm. you know, rationality, you know, rational reasoning, then what you, your conclusion will not be called faith. That's not okay. what we call faith, right? So if you're like, I believe in God because mm -hmm. I use applied logical reasoning, right? And mm -hmm. I came to the conclusion that this is the most rational answer that the, that Jesus is God. Okay, that would that conclusion would not be our faith. That would be your conclusion. Well, but no, I think it's at that. I think that conclusion can be come to logically, and then you say, and therefore, because you know, I believe this or because I've re reasoned this out. Now I'm going to trust in Jesus. Now I'm going to actually that's, walk out that, that. That's not what people mean. That's not what people mean when they mean faith. Like if you like, if you come up to the conclusion that something is true, there's mm -hmm. nothing to add on top of it. You know that this is true. You believe in it, right? Mm -hmm. Faith is like, faith is like a completely different methodology. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if I, if I believe like, if I believe, I don't know, that evolution is the best theory that explains the diversity in life, right? I'm like, okay, I've seen the evidence and I, I, I'm, I think it's justified to believe in the evolution as the theory of evolution. Therefore, I will now adopt, I will go into phase two and have faith in it. There's no phase two. There, like you're done. You believe in it. You're, you think it's justified to believe in it. There's no additional steps to take. You saw the evidence. Now you agree. What is? What are you doing on top of that that you didn't, have before like you didn't add anything to it you know what I mean? okay your, yeah well i definitely think those who believe in evolution have have to have faith in it okay because there's but i feel like your maybe we should maybe your we definition should... of faith mm -hmm. you have a different definition of faith because that's not what faith means but well yeah. Maybe we, uh, I, I, I love this discussion and we could probably talk about this for an hour. So maybe we can do this as a future conversation 
and okay, okay. really talk about what faith means. But I just want to go back to now you told your story now. So, and you realized for you, you thought there was no God. Now, do you feel sure now that there is no God? No, of course not. I'm not sure of anything. I'm only mm -hmm. sure of one thing, which is uh, that at this moment, there, there's an experience happening. I wouldn't even say I'm having that experience because even the concept of I could be an illusion. But nothing is for certain except that. The, mm. the, the experience that is being had at this moment in time, not even in the past and the future, but at the moment that we're talking. Right? There, cool. any, anything else, any other claim um, is just hot. I, I believe in it with a high degree of certainty, but not absolute certainty. So mm -hmm. when it comes to God, I I don't say there's, when you say, are you certain that there is no God? I say, I am as certain that there is no God that I am certain that there's no Santa Claus. And what makes you as certain that there's no God? As, Actually, as I am more certain Santa Claus could like, well, I, because I what makes me uh, as certain, well, it depends on the, which God you're talking about. Um, okay. Are you talking about the Christian God or talking about the Islamic God? Which God? Because these gods are, first of all, for these gods to be real and to have done the things that they claim to have done, um, all, you know, many of the theories that have have had huge explanatory powers over our observation about the universe have that are completely aligned with each other and have done and, and have been proven to have a huge predictive power. Those models have to be all incorrect okay you have to break those laws right so th this seems like the god explanation is a very pathetic and useless explanation for where how everything came about and how where the universe comes it makes it makes everything more complicated it doesn't do any any it contradicts everything we know about the universe and it doesn't not only it doesn't explain everything it makes the answer more complicated than the question that is being answered right it's it's just basically uh we don't know therefore magic kind of solution to our observation of the universe right so when it comes to theories it's one of the weakest that the people have if not the most it's the weakest uh popular um theory that exists for everything that we've seen so in like it's basically a claim and nothing else with nothing to back it up. So, for example, it, it would be as likely that there's a God as the, as the, I, I have a, I use, usually use this claim. I say, like, let's imagine this theory. This is a theory I came up with, right? That the Big Bang was a fart of a giant turtle in another dimension, right? This theory is as likely to be true as the Yahweh theory or the Allah theory, okay? It's just a claim with nothing to back it up. Is it impossible? No, it's not impossible. It's possible that the Big Bang was the fart of a giant turtle, turtle in another dimension. Obviously, it's not impossible. Nothing is impossible, okay? But I will take the Allah theory and the Jesus theory as seriously and as likely as my giant turtle, turtle theory. Mm hmm does that make sense? Well, I'm not it. I, yeah, I mean, it makes sense in. Okay, well, it makes it your words make sense, mind. but I don't think it's a I, I, I mean, of course, I strongly disagree with you. <laughs> I know, but, but some people are some people are taking it my claims. Yeah, some people are actually believing in this um, theology. I think I'm going to I'm going to take this more seriously. We could start a new religion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, Manny says farting turtles all the way down. <laughs> no, one. Hey, don't. It's Tohid, okay? It's only one turtle, okay? Dude, that's blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, um, now, why should I think there's no God, Armin? Because, see, as sure as you feel in that direction, I feel sure in the other direction. So, I mean, there's no, the question should be asked the other way around, okay? 
the you sh there is no reason for you not uh, to believe that there is no God. Okay, the question should be like, why should I believe in a God? The, the burden of proof is on the person who's making the claim, right? So you should lack a belief in God for the exact same reason that you lack a belief in my farting turtle. Okay, because neither of them have any evidence or <coughs> proof to back them up. There's no logical reasoning behind be the belief in any of them for the exact same reason. Or some other people say for because there's no supporting evidence. Well, it makes it sound as if lack of belief in God is a neutral position. And I don't think it's neutral. So like your book is why there is no God. That is making a claim that's mm -hmm. it's not it's not starting from a neutral position, right? It it is because I explained that in the introduction of the book. I claim that when things are the likeliness of something is close to close to zero, for pragmatic reasons, we treat them as if it's zero, right? Mm -hmm. If you ask me, okay, so I agree. Like that would be that's why there's a subtitle, mm -hmm. okay? The subtitle makes it makes it obvious that I'm not making that claim, right? But we treat God, um, we make special, we make a special fair you know case for god like for example if somebody asks me i mean is there santa i'm gonna be like well there's nothing certain about the world and there's no evidence for the believing santa so although it's possible that santa exists um given that there's no evidence i will say that i lack a belief in santa unless there's evidence that shows me otherwise i'm not gonna say that i'm gonna be like no what are you talking about? There's no Santa. Or like if somebody says, is there Peter Pan is real? I'm going right. to give you the same answer, right? So I'm like, God, apparently, we make a special case for it. And we were like, if somebody says there's no God, we're like, hey, what? You can't be sure. You're, you're making a claim. I'm like, okay, if you want to pin me down and if you want to be philosophical about this, sure. There's everything is possible, including, a, you know, my giant fart, farting turtle. But come on, like the possibility of it, you know, there's an infinite number of unfalsifiable claims that we make, can make. And given that there's infinite numbers of unfalsifiable claims that we can make, the chances of each one of them is one over infinity. And one over infinity is pretty close to zero. Okay. It's not technically zero, but it's pretty close to zero. So I'm going to treat it like zero. So I'm going to say, for pragmatic reasons, I'm just going to say there's no God. But you're starting it. Who gets to decide what the percentage is for the starting point? Because you said the starting point, like, is like close to zero, right? For like, mm -hmm. like the existence of God, like the you know uh, likelihood of His existence. Now, for me, it's the opposite. I think it's like likelihood one hundred percent, ninety nine percent. Why? Why? Yeah. Well, because I do not uh, in our scientific observations of the world. We do not see, it's actually a law, right? Matter does not come like into existence. It, it's neither created or destroyed. We don't see that, right? So um, we don't have an explanation for the origin of the universe because even if we even if we give the Big Bang, which I don't believe in the Big Bang, but if, if I did believe in the Big Bang, it still wouldn't solve the problem of why and, you know, inf uh, incredibly small, you know, point suddenly um you know burst and so we don't know so you say we don't know things so basically you're saying yeah. we don't know things okay and and if we but, don't know but, we don't know but it's also that we do know things okay we also know that life does not come from non-life that's actually a well-established law like mm. we've never observed life coming from non-life we have well, i mean we actually we we first of all we have demonstrated that life can come from non-life no Oh, you I'll send you. It's some. actually I'll send you. it's a law. It's a <laughs> it life no. does not come from non-life. There's a there, there's almost nothing more scientifically assured than that. Oh my God. But but we can look, Arvin. Okay, okay. I like I said, we could go on like a rabbit trail on each one of these topics. So we can do that topic another day. Let okay, me okay, ask you. That. Okay. Um, so just getting back to my questions, why do you think or, or I'm sorry, do you think belief in God is always harmful? Um, belief in God is always harmful. Um, not always, but so likely 
that is worth destroying. So belief in God, like, for example, I could come up with very unique situations where it would make sense for us to, for example, I, here, here's a scenario, okay? Let's say there's a, there's a four-year-old girl in the hospital uh, dying from cancer, okay? And she says, you're standing right next to her, and you're an atheist, okay? And she says, you know, she's, she knows she's going to die, and she's so excited to see grandma, okay? She misses her so much, and she's so excited to go see her, okay? If you as an atheist tell her, like, well, actually, uh, there is no afterlife, and your grandma is dead, and you're not going to see her, and when you die, you also are going to perish, and there's going to be nothing left after you. If you tell her that, then can I swear here? No, okay. Sure. You're, you're an asshole, all right? So, <laughs> like, if you if you do that, right? So, in those, like, I could come up with unique situations like that where, yeah, belief in God is, really like, the most rational thing to do, right? But I also believe that overall, um, belief in things is, is better that our beliefs are close to reality. I think societies and people and, and individuals prosper when the closer our beliefs are to reality. I think um, anybody who has a belief system that is closer to reality is going to be able to better achieve the goals that they have determined that they, that is the goals for them, right? And as as individuals and as a group together, um, you know, this is the best thing, you know, for I everybody. agree. Right. I okay, agree. No. Cool. Um, so what do you think of then uh, about Christian evangelists like me? Because like I am actively trying to help people know God. It's like my, my passion. Wait, wait, before, can I, can I share my screen? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if this is the example I was looking for. I want, I want to answer your question, but before that, I just sure. want to see if, oh, here. Scientists created bacteria with a synthetic genome. Is this artificial life? In a milestone for synthetic biology, colonies of E. coli thrive with DNA constructed from scratch by humans, not nature. So that's an example. But I don't know if this is the example I was looking for, but we could go look at that later. Right. But you're using, even if, first of all, I think they, um, they're they using parts of life to reconstruct life. When it no, says no. they're making... They're using it from no. scratch. They're using, um, they're using chemicals obtained from life in order to do that. Um, and then, scientists have created a living organism whose DNA is entirely human-made. Perhaps a new form of life, experts said, and a milestone in the field of synthetic biology. Yeah, well, let the devil will be okay. in the details. I promise okay. you, they're not they're not doing it entirely from scratch. They're using or chemicals that they gain from life. But, um, but that's we can we can like have a total we, discussion. We, we on can that. we can also sh make organic material from inorganic material. Like we have done that for a long time ago. Like we can take inorganic material and humans can turn inorganic material to organic material, right? And we can make organic material and we can make DNA out of it. So we could make non-living things to living things now. We have reached that point. Okay, Armin, I I don't think that's true, okay. but I'll grant it to you. Let me grant okay. it to you. And then let me say that is only proof that intelligence can create life. Okay, not that it can come about by natural processes. How many people had to work on that? How many minds? That's well, I proof wasn't... that life can come from a mind. If that if that is true, it's proof that life can come from a mind, you, not from natural processes. I have a lot of problems with what you're saying, but I don't know if you want to take the direct conversation in that direction. But let's. Yeah, I'll you let you have, have the last point on that. You can you can you can respond, and I won't respond back. And then we can right. move on. I, okay, so I so first of all, when you said like uh, we don't know certain things, right? We don't know where life, um, where the universe comes from. So that's an appeal to ignorance, okay? Just because we don't know how things came to be, that doesn't mean we can insert a theory, okay? That's not a good enough thing. And now the fallacy, you're generalizing, right? So you're saying, you're looking at your observation, and you're saying that because I'm seeing here that intelligence was required to create life, 
okay, then I'm going to conclude that intelligence is always required to create life. So you're taking one observation, and based on the observation, you're trying to apply that to everything, to, you know, apply something specific to a, a whole category, right? But you have to demonstrate that why this observation applies to the whole category. Anyways, I don't want to, but I don't want to like call out fallacies. Like I don't, I want to be, I want to be friends, <laughs> friendly today. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good uh, Baba Dash. Um, Farsi What? Wait, really? Goftam Gure Gure Baba Dash Gure Baba Gure Baba, you're saying your dad's grave? Like, I don't know. Oh, Gure Baba. yeah, sorry. It's, you know, it's, I guess I, it's an expression that means, like, oh, forget about it. Like, it's not a problem. Gure Baba Bash, if I could remember saying Gure Baba. Oh. Gure Baba. Yeah, I think, like, it's almost correct, I think. Like, but say it again, oh, okay. say it one more time. Oh yeah, and maybe my pronunciation is really bad. But I said, hey, can we? If you speak Persian, can we have you on the Persian show? I, I mean, sure. Show really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that would be fantastic. How, how? Like, how good is your Persian? Like, oh. can you like have a conversation? Like, <laughs> okay. Can you say? Yeah. Okay. Can you say? Can you say you're a Christian? Man, Masi has them. Oh my god. You would be the perfect. I, it would be an honor if you come on an atheist republic's Persian show as a guest. I okay? would absolutely love to. Actually, Armin, I have a channel in Persian. Like I have a Persian. I have a Persian okay. version of Bread of Life. Nane Hayat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will come on this channel as many times as you want. If you come on the Persian channel as many times as I okay yeah you know what I actually I, you is your mission to spread Christianity yes okay and that's your serious goal I will that's I will give you a serious goal okay I will give you a community of Iranians to talk to okay like <laughs> okay oh my God cool. Jesus Christ this is amazing I didn't know that how did you how did I not know this you have been a what you've been on you've been like watching <laughs> atheist Republic you have, have you ever mentioned that in a live chat. I've, I've said some things in Persian in the live chat. I, I like a few times I've Google, said some little I Persian. thought maybe you use Google Translate or you said, like, I don't know. I don't trust that you know Persian just because, like, you should have said something <laughs> all this time. <laughs> Wait, why do you know Persian? <laughs> oh, I learned. Well, well, I, I went to a military language school many years ago, and I studied Persian for one year. And then I lived in Turkey for four years and I had like many friends from Iran and Afghanistan. So that's kind of how I improved my Persian. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I love you. I don't know what to say. Oh, like I need to, <laughs> this is so good. We should, <laughs> wow. We should, um, you know, the, per the people on our channel, on the Persian channel, they will be so interested in l listening to you oh my okay okay good yeah some of the, yeah yeah okay i have so many ideas i'm i'm, I'm uh, sorry i'm very excited uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't cool. awesome i'm excited too okay so but you didn't but so you think we were kind of you were kind of talking about i interrupted you i think when we were talking about like do you think what i'm doing is harmful like what do you think about people like me who are spreading christianity yeah i do think what you're doing is harmful but not as um but it offsets by the fact that okay so there's two things happening okay you're spreading bullshit okay that is harmful <laughs> okay but you are also spreading kindness okay and i think that that is more important okay so i think right now uh, what we need uh, between in, between rationality and kindness, I think the priority should be kindness. Okay, um, I think the way I think about it is that imagine if we're we to, if we change this world and there were two different scenarios, right? Um, let's say we take the world that we live in today and we change it to scenario A, where everybody becomes twice as intelligent and half as kind. 
Okay, that would be scenario A. Or we take scenario B and people, everybody becomes twice as kind and half as intelligent. Okay, I think the scenario A will turn into hell. Okay, even though people are more intelligent, I think the fact that they're half as kind, it will turn that world into hell. But scenario B, even though our progress would become a lot slower, right? And a lot of things would not move forward. I think we will more slowly move in the right direction. You know what I mean? Because because people are more kind, okay? So I think like you, the fact that you're doing what you're doing because you genuinely care for people and you are, you're concerned about them, okay? That attitude is what we need more of. Cool. Uh, so I I'm wanted to talk a little bit about your book and like what drove your passion for compiling this. And by the way, I'll just say this is like, of course, I disagree with the ideas in here, but if you, this is, it's very well written. It's concise. Like that is something I appreciate so much. Like when mm -hmm. people just get to the point and you really like get to the point in this book. So I, I wasn't bored reading it. I wasn't like, ah, just make the point. already. It was like very concise. It just lays out the points. So, you know, I think it's a good resource for all you atheists out there. So I recommend it. And it's not very expensive. You made it like five bucks. It's like five bucks on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. I made it the cheapest possible to get the 70% royalty, I think. Okay. But it's also cool. cheaper. Also, it's cheaper on Kindle as well. I think it's like less than two bucks on Kindle. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Also, you could get so it. Actually, you could also get it for free, uh, the PDF version, if you subscribe to Atheist Republic's newsletter. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. guys, the link is um, in the chat. You can um, find Atheist Republic. And I mean, I think it's like a good organization to belong to if you're an atheist, right? It's seeking to kind of unite atheists and give them a community. So and and believers and believers who believe that atheists should be should not be mistreated like or oppressed or you know it's 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 a community for atheists and including believers who are for atheists, atheist allies. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so what was your like um inspiration for writing the book? Um, I was tired of answering the same questions over and over again. <laughs> so I was like, people were like, um, like, I mean, what about this? What about that? I'm like, oh my God, here we go again. So, but now I can like, here's the, here, here's the book. <laughs> I like here. I already nice. the <laughs> yeah. I already answered everything. Yeah. Now, but so actually, did you feel like you already learned every, like, did you already know everything that no, was actually, in the book before? I'm kidding. I'm half kidding. The actual reason was every single atheist book was i thought too complicated for the average person that's the re main reason okay i was like we need something that's concise and simple and if any people want to get more comp like I'm, i was happy to see some of the one star reviews being like this is too simple i was like exactly right because i give you references to go and get more complicated if you want but i just wanted to write a yeah. book like, like i i saw most atheist book come up as philosophical and like like so academic and I'm like I need we need something available to an average person and that's why I wrote the book yeah and it does that because yeah like I it, when people get into these deep philosophical things I'm like this is so boring most people mm. are not gonna you know invest the time and I'm probably one of those uh so okay or, but also it's, it's not that it's not that they're like people are not <clears throat> intelligent enough to get this it's just like you have to be involved. Like most people are not involved in debate culture or like haven't read like philosophical books and stuff. So this is going to be too intimidating for them. I'm not saying like people shouldn't feel bad. Like, Hey, I have a life. I can't just like know these fallacies or this philosophical terms. Like that's like, I, I have kids. I have a family. I have, I have my own career. I might be an expert in something else. If these are foreign concepts to me, like you shouldn't be ashamed. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe actually, you you you, do, you you manage your time properly because why should you learn all of these things? You know, I mean, you have things to do, right? Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. So it's not about lack of intelligence; it's like lack of interest, lack of time, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm not being part of the debate culture, not being part mm -hmm. of like 
deep philosophical arguments, which is fine. Yeah. So did you learn anything while you were writing it? What did you learn? Mm, I I learned that I that editors are the real writers <laughs> because <laughs> like like I was you know I realized that everything I wrote was made um, a lot more readable because of the editor. So the editor needs to get a lot more credit than they do. Um, I learned, but the arguments that I made was the arguments that I've already uh, have claimed across uh, a thousand other times. So I didn't, I learned a few things because I had to look them up. I learned how to explain things better because I was trying to make things as concise as possible. Um, taking out the fluff, like every time, every time I wrote something, I would like read it 10 times back. I was like, can I take something out? Is there something unnecessary here to make it, to remove all the fluff as much as possible? Right. Um, so I, I got I got good at getting to the point. Good, yeah, that's that's really great. Um, what have you learned about people from your experience with Atheist Republic? Um, <laughs> um, I lowered my expectations, uh, and I've learned to try to like people, even if they're dumb. You know. Like, I been mean, like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Not everybody has to be, you know, like you, I think a, a lot of people who are so much involved in discussions and stuff, like they get so frustrated with people who are like, why didn't you get this? Why didn't you get this? Like, come on. Like, they want to like shake them out. Like, I'm like, I'm like, it's, I'm like, now I'm like, it's okay. Like people, not everybody has to get everything. This is how people are. Just chill and try to figure out how to make things work for everybody, even though this is how people are. I think that's how, that's how Atheist Republic changed. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so have any of your views changed since you founded Atheist Republic? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. I actually keep a doc on things that I, I'm, I, I get concerned if I don't change my mind often. Mm -hmm. Um. Because I feel like I like this. This seems like dogma to me. Like I mean, like there's no, no foundational beliefs has changed for a large, long time. It seems like, you know, it seems like you have like you can't be that smart, right? Obviously, you believe. Obviously, some of my beliefs are wrong, and if I'm not detecting them for a long time, I get concerned, right? So I try to keep a document about the things that I've changed my mind on, right? Um. But like, so like, well, which like my opinions regarding atheism and atheist activism or in general, because there's yeah, a lot. anything and like, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say like focused on the area of like people, yeah. faith, God and, you know, atheism. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I, like I mentioned before the show, before we went live, one of the things I major, like I've changed my mind on is um, it's more important to figure out how we can get how we can get along, right? Um, like if we, if I'm having discussions with people about why their beliefs are wrong, um, it's not. It's mostly not to change their opinion. It's mostly to demonstrate that we can disagree and still be friends with each other. Okay, because and if they change their mind, that's great. Uh, sometimes they change. People change their mind, but mostly is to show the world like that are that we shouldn't make agreements a condition for friendship and we don't even have to be very uh mild about our agreements this about our disagreements we can passionately disagree with each other and mm -hmm. still get along with each other right we don't even have to yes. hold back like we could have the gloves on and go at it while we're like talking about atheism islam christianity hinduism and then once that discussion is over, just like, you know, go have and you know, go have it, go have, go be friends, go be nice to each other, you know, because because the thing is that we're sharing we're sharing a planet with each other, okay, and we're not gonna get rid of each other, right? So we have to figure out a way to get along. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I love the way that you express that, and that's I I feel the same way, and that's why like. Um, that's, I feel like that's one of the purposes of my channel now is because I didn't intend to attract an atheist audience, but I'm really thankful that I have an atheist audience. And, you know, I don't like, 
whatever they say, whatever, you know, they say in the chat or if they come on stream, you know, they express very strong views and I extra, express very strong views in the contrary. But, um, you know, I have love for, I have love for everybody on this channel. And um, so it doesn't really matter to me if somebody is strongly disagreeing. Did I come, did I say anything that uh, during this uh, stream that made you like upset or annoyed or anything? No. Okay. No, I'm, I'm so accustomed to everything that you said here. I mean, I'm accustomed to so much worse. Like yeah, okay. <laughs> people are constantly, um, you know, saying really negative things. And so you're, you're, you've been very mild. Um, so let's see, what else did I want to ask you? Well, we can bring up, actually, that might be a good point to, to bring up that starred comment because before the show started, um, me and Armin oh, yeah. were just kind of looking at the comments in the chat and, so I read this one out to Armin. It was Jake Green says, each time Rebecca does a stream, it's a prime opportunity for her God to present itself and have a chat. It will be a no-show as usual. And Armin yeah, was... I, yeah, I was so bad because you laughed that loud, right? So I'm just thinking like, I'm just, it's so impressive because your reaction was not like, you know, you didn't get upset. People are like making fun of your religion, but you just... It, it it not only you didn't get upset, you seem to be enjoying. You seem to enjoy it. You like so. I just think like a, a lot of atheists and a lot of Christians and a lot of Muslims and a lot of Hindus are learning to be more mature. You know what I mean? To be like, you know, if you, if somebody takes a jab at your religion, not only like not only are they demonstrating that they can't, they're not upset about it. Like more people like, okay, that's funny. Okay, I can appreciate that. You know. And I think a lot of atheists used to not just hate religion, but also be frustrated with religious people. And I think like I'm noticing a lot of even big um, atheist activists, they're like toning that down. You know what I mean? They're noticing like, you know, people are people. And this is, you know, if they if they have beliefs that are wrong, you ha we have beliefs. Everybody has beliefs that are wrong. Like, like if I think like your beliefs in Jesus are wrong, well, I have beliefs. I, 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 I am very sure, not 100%, okay, because nothing is for sure, but I'm almost certain that I have beliefs that are so embarrassingly wrong that if I knew how wrong they were, I would be so ashamed right now. I would be so embarrassed. Like I know I have those beliefs, right? So why should I hold your wrong beliefs against you when I know I have them as well, right? But again, I, I've, see, I've seen some Muslims, okay, so that they are like, I make fun of Islam in front of them, and they laugh about it. I, that's that used to be rare, you know. That used to be like rare. Like okay, that used to be more more even like um, Muslims who would laugh about it. They would try to. They would be ashamed that they're laughing about it. But then now they're like okay with laughing about it, right? And I don't. I'm not saying that's common, but it's more common than I, it used to be, right? Your reaction to that joke, it was just so beautiful to see. Like somebody, like you know, like you didn't mind it at all. I don't know. I just. I'm just being hopeful. Maybe I'm being too naive to be hopeful. Do you think I'm being naive? Well, I hope you're not being naive. Um, yeah. And like, I hope that, you know, that is the direction that we're moving in. And I guess for me, it's kind of like, well, if what I believe is true, then whatever Jake thinks is just, you know, that I, I don't see why I should be offended by that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it is, but it, it was, yeah. but it was yeah. funny. It was cute. So, yeah. You, you know what's also funny? Jake confirming that his conclusion was correct right now in the live chat. He's like, like again, he came out, like, notice how my statement was factual. God, no, I know. Like, <laughs> 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 well, has God been a no show? I don't know. I think that's up for debate. Hmm. So, um, it depends what God is trying to accomplish here. So, um, here's another question. Um, Lena says, well, a question. Lena says, studying the history of religion, Armin, studying the history of religion led me to the origin of shamanism and the use of psychedelic plants and animals. What have you learned about such mind altering drugs? I, okay, so I really, really want to try them. Okay. But 
there are a few so yeah i know i know they are life-changing experiences okay and it just sounds so fascinating because i know some of them i know they're not harmful you know unlike what people think right like as some I, i'm not going to name them some of the ones that are not harmful because if you name them that's really bad for the youtube channel um but I'm not, I, I don't think I'm going to try them because there are a very small percentage of people who've tried them and they had the life altering experience has been towards the negative. Okay. And I know the chances of that happening. Like I, I'm so like, it will change everything apparently about how you see yourself and the world. And I really like right now how I see myself and the world. And I'm like, I'm, I'm worried about messing with that. <laughs> so I don't like, like, this is pretty good. What if I change it? And all of a sudden it's something that I don't, that is not as this good. So I'm scared. Right. So I'm really, I really want to try it, but I'm also not going to try it because I'm happy with how things are. Does that make sense? Well, cool. yeah, definitely. Um, and so here's a question from Otangelo. How is it that matter created minds that started to comprehend math and calculus and language using the laws of logic, abstract thought and beauty, ab able to start thinking? How is it that, okay, he, I guess there's more of a question he continued, but basically he wants to know how from matter you can get minds that. You just want me to just like do a crash course of um, evolutionary biology in the next 30 seconds for you, basically. You want me to just do that? Like, I don't know. Like, that's what you want me to do. Okay, sure. Sure. Like, <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, so, uh, yeah. I'll, 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 what I could do is like, there these, these questions have answers. Okay. And the answers are not simple. Okay. The answers are not simple enough for you to, for somebody to just like give us one statement for you. They are compli Life is complicated, so you would expect the explanations to be complicated. If the explanation is simple, that's when you should be worried. If you're like, oh my God, this explanation is very complicated. I don't get it. That means you, that, that is more likely in the, in the path of the right direction. If the explanation is like God did it, that's when you should be worried. If you understand the explanation this easily, easily, that means that you're probably going in the wrong direction. Something this complicated should not have a simple answer. Okay? But go study it. Go take the time because these are, if you really want to know, go and actually understand how evolutionary biology explains all of this from people who actually are experts in it, not for people who don't believe in it. Right? Like, don't, not for people who are saying that this is all... Uh, fake. Go actually go to the source. Um, and guys, if you have any questions for Armin, now is the time to put them in the chat because I have one final question I'm going to ask him. But um, while I'm waiting for you to put questions, I just want to give a shout out to Fenton Mully. Uh, thank you for putting the link to my channel on when I was doing the interview with T-Jump. You put the link to my channel and encouraged people to subscribe. Um, in his uh, chat. So thank you very much for doing that. And also Woody Woodpecker did that. Thank you. And I uh, shared this stream on the community tab on ACES. Oh, well. cool. Thank you. Uh, so, okay. Let's see. There is a question here. I don't, I, I, I'm not reading these. If I see a question mark, I'm putting it up. So Peter W says, does Armin know how much Rebecca has gone into this subject? Well, no. we, this is probably, this is the first time I've talked to Armin really like, I mean, other, well, not the first time, but we haven't really talked about this. So I don't think he does, yes. but I do have another channel Armin called examining evolution. Okay. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> so I like bring people on to talk about evolution. Uh, but it's, it it hard, hardly has any subscribers and I don't put much effort into it, but, um, you know, this is a topic oh. that, you know, is Here's a good source. Here's near a good and dear to my heart. Have you read this book? You should try this book. Um, Why I have evolution? not read that book. Yeah. Yeah. But I should, so, I need to read that book. I need to review that book on my channel. Okay. So the book um, is Why Evolution is True by Jerry Coyne. Yeah. So check it out. Okay. 
Um, so, People are confirming in live chat and, that this is an excellent research. Okay, I will re I, I will read that book and I will do a review on it on my examining evolution book. And what, since you're recommending that one, I'll recommend this one. Darwin Devolves by Michael Behe. Guys, okay, okay. evolution works in the wrong direction. Okay, it's degrading you. It's degrading things. It is not building up structures within creatures. All right. So, um, wait. I so you believe that ninety nine point nine 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 percent of biologists experts are wrong? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a big claim. Yeah. Well, look. If I was basing it on just my opinion, then I yeah. I mean, I would probably be wrong, right? But what is this guy's credentials? Um, he has a PhD in he's a PhD in biochemistry. Okay, okay. So and he is you. You're going with the point zero one percent of the people who are saying this is wrong, and all the, the yeah. vast majority of the scientific community has got it got this wrong, and that guy got it right. Yeah, because I'm using logical reasoning, Armin. And okay. actually, I think if 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 anybody is willing to overcome their um like desire to just fall in line with authority, like because it, it sounds really nice to like lay back and, and let the scientists do all the critical thinking for you. But I don't think it takes a PhD in biochemistry to see the major flaws with evolution. And mm. so you know, I I think people who are using logical reasoning and looking at the scientific observations um, will come to the same conclusion that I do <laughs> unless okay, they okay. have a philosophical commitment in the opposite direction. Okay. Sure. I would be interested in seeing what your reasoning though, because um, you know, if, if, if the evolutionary uh, theory has been, is the reason why we have so much, uh, we like a lot of the medicine, a lot of the uh, technology that we have, a lot of the uh, solutions to diseases, a lot of the models that we have built for agriculture is based on this theory. So for this theory to be wrong means that all of the, of the predictive power and the explanatory power and the manipulation power that this theory has goes all up in the air. Like we have demonstrated that this theory works so well. I don't know like what you're going to... Armin, look, I'm a huge lover of technology and medicine and scientific research. And I will just say, I think it's in spite of the evolutionary storytelling that we've been able to accomplish what we have. So the evolutionary evolution does absolutely nothing for us scientifically. All it does it, it, is literally built a story to believe, right? No, and no. The, so Mm -hmm. The models that the models that scientists today make their conclusions on is based on the evolutionary theory. So for the fact that their models continue to work and continue to give us the medicine that we that works and continues to give us all the solution to all the other biological problems, including disease and agriculture and stuff, like it means like your the foundation, the foundation not being true will mean like all of this is like magic, you know, like, it's just like, there's so many things. Okay. I'm not going to get into this discussion, but we could, like, <laughs> if, we, if you want, if you want, we could do an entire stream on this. If you are interested, I want to see what your, what's your evidence for evolution. I'm not being true. Like we could do yeah. a two hour stream of this. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, um, so I guess I just kind of wanted to ask you as a final question, what are, what are some of the most important things to you in life? What are the most important? Um, like my personal life or for, for the world? Both. Reducing misery. I think both. I think for both, yes. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the most important thing for me. Like trying to take away from the amount of misery that people are experiencing. That's a really noble goal. Yeah, it's, it's kind of difficult because it sometimes keeps me up at night just thinking about it. I feel like I could get very dark with this. I don't know if you want to go there. Yeah, I do. I do want to go there. I feel like we are, me, you, people in the live chat, 
we're living in these bubbles of heaven, okay? And we are surrounded by a sea of hell that we are so blind and deaf to. I think that we have drowned out all the screaming of around us that we don't even ex- know that is happening. I think there are just so many people right now in pain and in misery. And we here think that we have problems in our lives and we have no idea how lucky we are and how good we have had it. Like we get upset over like, I don't know, the power going out or like our car getting a flat tire. And we just don't understand that the people that are even have enough resources to have an internet, they are so privileged compared to as we're speaking, the people that are experiencing such a, not just people, but people and animals that are experiencing such high levels of torture and misery and sadness and heartbreak and uh, loneliness and psychological trauma and so much more. And it's all, and I think like there's just so much more misery in the world than happiness, right? And if we could just experience a fraction of that, we would be so motivated to like, okay, so why is not more being done in reducing this? Do you know what I mean? Like, if we just see a story of one person that is in that world right now, we would all be moved to all like, okay, we need to save that person. But we just don't know that that's happening at an astronomically higher level than a lot of us imagine, right? There's so many, there's, a, there's an ocean of people that are just living shit lives. And, and then, then if you add on top of that, the animals in nature, you know, I was, I was once, I don't know, this is good. For, like I was passing, I saw a little kitten in the street was, that was like being eaten by ants while it was alive. Right. And I was like, I could not imagine what that little kitten was going through right now. And I was like, I was looking for a rock to like, to maybe end the kitten's life. Right. Because I was like, this is this kid, this kitten is going to die anyways. And I'm like, what, why should it explain? I was like, what, what if somebody sees me like killing, killing a cat, like in the street? Like, I was like, worried about that. Right. And I was like, but anyway, this was in a third world country. So don't think like it was any place. Um, and I just, I was like, I came home and I'm thinking like, this is happening in nature all the time. Like right now, as we're speaking, there's a hamster in the belly of a goddamn snake that is being like, that is being just like slowly just as the, the stomach acid is being, being, he's feeling it on his skin all over. Like, and I'm like, there's somebody in North Korea in prison that is being tortured right now. Right. There are so many people that are starving. There's so many people that are, it's just like, I just feel like there's so much misery and it's just like, I don't know. We don't, I mean, even, even I, I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? I I, like, I come and once every six months I think about it. I'm like, Oh my God, that sucks. And then I move on. I don't think about it all the time. Like I'm just going, and then I go watch like uh, Netflix or like watch and go out on a date with my wife. Like, oh, wow. Like, okay, you thought about it for five minutes. I'm like, oh yeah, that's horrible. But then I move on. Like, we don't care. It's just like, I don't know. Sorry, I I went, it went too dark. I shouldn't go. No, it's so true. I mean, you're, this is, I, I, I also think about this and it's, and it's like, Am I going to like, am I sitting and like enjoying my life? Like it, like you said, if you really knew that there was somebody suffering and you could stop it with the money that like, let's say I spend going out and getting a soda, like, you know, um, would I like be willing to give that money to the person instead of getting the soda? And the answer is yes, but then I could do that anyway. Right. But Like I could do that. I could totally change my life and not do anything for myself. And that might be better for the world. So why don't I do that? And it's, you know, it it is, I think in some ways we are all responsible for what's happening in the world. But then in the same time, it's like, yeah, but the needs are so overwhelming. Even if I gave everything I had, it wouldn't make a huge dent 
in the world suffering, right? Like it really. Yeah, wouldn't. but it was still. But if if I did that with one of my things, if I give up something that I lecture, it wouldn't like people say it wouldn't end the world suffering. Yeah, but it would pen. It wouldn't. It wouldn't change the world, but it would change one person's world. Do you know what I mean? That's that would be significant, but we still don't do that. Um, also, this is one reason why I'm really against religion. Okay. Because they have taken this concept of heaven and hell into an imaginary realm, right? And they're fighting that battle instead of fighting this battle, right? I'm like, there is, we already have a hell and we ha already have a potential heaven and we could end that hell and we could expand the heaven, okay? But instead of, like, I think like we're wasting resources and thought and energy when instead of doing that over here, we're like worried about a different hell and a different heaven somewhere in La La Land or somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that because I think Jesus's teachings are about bringing the kingdom of God, like the things of God's kingdom. And in God's kingdom, there's no suffering. In God's kingdom, there's nobody starving. There, In God's kingdom, there's nobody sick. So it's like bringing the things of God's kingdom into this world. Like Jesus taught us to pray, um, may your That's, will be done mm -hmm. on earth as it is in heaven. May your kingdom come, right? And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So as it is in God's kingdom, that's, I kind of see myself as like an insurgent here. Like I'm bringing the things that are, I belong to the kingdom of God and I'm trying to bring the things of God's kingdom into this world, which includes, you know, bringing love, joy, um, you know, freedom from pain and that kind of thing. Well, I would argue that in effect, religion has done the opposite, but I don't want to like, no, I'm know, not talking uh, about religion. I'm talking about what's supposed to happen, right? Like what Jesus said to do. Okay. But I consider that religion. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm including that. I'm saying like Jesus, Jesus is teaching um, are also responsible for more misery in this world than, you know, then it, it basically it's a step backwards. Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, they're making the world a worse place, not a better place. That's my opinion. Well, I'm glad that you say that. And the reason I'm glad is because some people want to say, oh, well, Jesus is a nice guy and we'd all get along better if we just listened to him. But you're like mm -hmm. saying like, no, actually, because like if if he if he's a teacher at all like if he's not he's, who he says he is then he's an absolute lunatic you know um so no jesus jesus even as described in the bible is an evil cycle in my opinion which is the correct opinion <laughs> if he's not who he says he was okay but no, give no, me an even example. even if <laughs> not even if he is who he says he is even as he if he's even, god even he, if the way he's described in the Bible is like that man, that man needs to be put. Somebody needs to take take that guy out because that guy's dangerous. <laughs> so like, yeah. So hey, yeah. there's some people who agreed with that sentiment, and they did put him to yes, death. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank, no, okay. So thank the Romans. For, okay, but next time maybe I don't know. Use better nails so he doesn't <laughs> so, he, <laughs> like, so he doesn't run away. I did, like they didn't know he has superpowers, so maybe they should have done something else. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I think they. I think they should have just like used two nails on each hand so that he couldn't get out. Maybe. Oh wait, no. He he got out. No, he got out when he was in the cave. What am I talking about? They should have just sealed the cave or something, or they should have burned the body. They did Could, seal the cave. They should have burned the body. They should have burned. They should have burned the body. Do you think that would help? No. No, he would have still raised if they would burn the body. Yeah. Okay. There must yeah. be a solution. Like I don't know. Zom they're like, oh, they should have. They should have done the stick in the heart. The stick in the heart. Like that works on zombies, right? Mm. So maybe that works. That would work. Jesus, like as Je Jesus was the original zombie, wasn't he? No, no, there were zombies before Jesus. Were there zombies mm. before Jesus in the Old Testament? But aren't zombies like brain eaters? 
We don't have any evidence. Exactly. Of this eating no, brain. Exa- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I don't know. Like I think it does. <laughs> good one. Yeah, well, that's probably a good place to end today. Um, but I would really love to have further conversations about any of the topics. We could have, you know, many more if you want to. So thank yeah. you no, so I much. Would... Yeah. But but I okay, so by the way, um you don't get ever upset if you like to make fun of Christianity and all it doesn't bother you, right? No. Because uh, okay, okay. Because I don't wanna I don't wanna make you upset, you know, you're no. so nice. Okay. No, you're you're <laughs> totally free. Be totally okay, free. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. um, yeah. Thank you everybody for watching, and thank you so much, Armin. And please do go subscribe to Atheist Republic YouTube channel. Please sign up as a member on Atheist Republic and get Armin's book for free if you sign up. And uh, also, Secular Jihadists. I didn't put the link to that, but if you if you search it, you'll find Secular Jihadists. And do you want to say a little bit about that? What's the difference between Secular right. Jihadists and? So, Atheist Republic focuses on religious uh, religious um, news around the world, and also atheist the atheist community around the world, right? Um, and it it basically tackles every religion as long as there's something significant happening about it right um hinduism islam christianity judaism buddhism and anything that happens to atheists or the secular community uh, we cover it there we go me and susanna my uh, co-host and the ceo of atheist republic she does 99 percent of the work and she's amazing she's the um the smartest person I know in my personal life. Um, and she's, so she makes the show very engaging and fun to watch. And she does a lot of research and she knows herself. So you come, if even if you're a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu, and you're just interested in seeing an atheist perspective over what's happening around the world, Atheist Republic would be a great channel for you, right? Um, Secular Jihadists is more oriented towards Islam, and the Middle East. So it has an Islamic and Middle Eastern focus, right? Um, it's more targeted uh, for people who are interested in that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. And I want to highlight this comment from uh, B.S. Lewis because he says, if you make fun of Christianity, bread might make you atheist of the month. True story. And if you look <laughs> at this certificate on my uh, screen right now, I mean, on my screen, <laughs> B.S. Lewis is the atheist of the month. And we uh, are coming up on the end of the month. There's only a few days left in this month. I have some pretty yeah. good ideas about who the atheist of the month might be. But I, as always, I'm having a tough time making a decision. But I will be announcing that uh, in, in, in a few days. So thanks, guys, for watching. And Thank I hope you. everyone has a great day. Thanks, Arvin. Thank you. This was so much fun. It was.